Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As soon as I started uploading reference letter videos, work experience videos, because I completed my uh, uh, process about uh, proving my work experience to OINP received nomination afterwards. So that's why I started uploading videos on that. So one question that um, I get on from many subscriber is that what if my employer refuses to issue me um, a reference letter? Now this is a problem, right? This is always going to be a problem. I wouldn't say that, okay, you can do this 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and you will be fine. No, there is no uh, definite way of saying it. There is no definite way of suggesting it. Okay, so if your employer refuses to issue you a reference letter, then based on my research, this is what is my opinion that I'm going to share with you guys. Okay, this is no legal advice, obviously. And if you can come up with a better way of doing it, you should. Okay, so if your employer refuses to issue you a reference letter that uh, this is not their policy that they will issue you an experience letter or a reference letter based on the IRCC requirements or, or based on the IRCC format, okay, as, they, uh, as the people call it. So if they say it, then obviously you are going to get that in an email and you are going to attach that email with your application. Okay, and if you had a misconduct, now uh, let me be frank, if you had a misconduct, if your integrity was compromised and your company does not issue you a reference letter because uh, there was some corruption or there was some integrity issue, then obviously uh, when IRCC or those institutes will be inquiring about your case, then obviously uh, your work experience will be under jeopardy. Okay, so if that's the case, then I say that you should consult a lawyer because uh, this is not this video is not for that scenario. Okay, but if your employer says that no, no, we don't issue IRCC, we don't know what's IRCC, we don't issue that. So get that in in email and include that in your uh, complete application. Okay, but but so reference letter is a must. So what you do is you go to your departmental head, your boss your owner uh, whichever that HR is not issuing me a letter but I need a letter so please um, uh, uh, on the company official letterhead if the on obviously the owner has access to that okay and because HR does not do it so your owner can give you it on an official letterhead okay but if you don't get a letterhead now another subscriber asked me on the last video that if my um, sh uh, like she works in a small company which does not even have a letterhead so what do they do then you will have to get the document notarized the process of notarization is uh, you can go to notary public there would be agents sitting in uh, front of that notary public okay and uh, you can get it notarized through your agents i'm talking about pakistan and india obviously so, okay, notarization is very crucial for anything that is not on the official letterhead. Okay, so your supervisor, your owner, your boss, your manager, your departmental head, uh, any of these can, can write this reference letter for you. Uh, and obviously, thing is that uh, that, com that uh, person should be verifiable through LinkedIn, through uh, company website that he was actually or she was actually your boss your supervisor during this period okay and so because IRCC would like to confirm that okay that this person was actually your boss during the period that you claim your work experience to be in but notarizing that document is essential and um, another subscriber asked me that what if my company does not have a website and obviously they they might have a Facebook page they might have a LinkedIn profile um, I mean, you need to give something digital, uh, some digital links so that uh, IRCC can confirm your work experience. Now, if you don't give them anything, any way of confirming whether your company was legitimate, whether your um, uh, owner is actually the owner of your company, whether your, I mean, you need to be transparent and you need to be helpful enough to help the case officer that okay this is the way you can verify my work experience okay so if your company does not have a website then uh, use their social media platforms because uh, to be honest who does not have a social media platform these days
and uh, obviously uh, their email address will also not be the official email address at the rate of your company.com it will not be like that they would have at the rate of uh, yahoo.com gmail.com so this is something that you need to be worried about and uh, you need to give some supporting thing about it okay maybe uh, maybe if it is a very small company now this is just out of the blue okay if it is a very small company uh, you uh, you should include your company registration because obviously all the companies are registered with the government so you can include that document in in your application now this is again not a legal advice i'm not a consultant nor a lawyer but this is based on my research and my best um, uh, understanding of the of the scenario okay so you need to prove that your company is actually a genuine company so what can you do about it you can uh, include your government official letters that okay this company is a gen genuine company and you can include the visiting cards of the person signing it of the owner of the hr director whichever okay and uh, those visiting cards will help the um, immigration officer to actually contact them in case they want to verify your work experience which th which they will because uh, IRCC is very strict about it they should be very strict about it so make sure your work experience is genuine because there are many consultant out, th out there uh, if you're a teacher they would say no problem we would get you in through SINP so what they do is they um, create fake letters fake experience uh, of an like uh, uh, a wholesale trade manager okay and then they, uh, they would give you no code 0621 you wouldn't even know about it right and uh, when IRCC will uh, reject your application and ban you for five years they will not ban your consultant your illegal consultant they will not ban him or her they will ban you okay so obviously the responsibility is on your shoulder it is not on the shoulders of your um, a consultant or your lawyer so make sure your work experience is genuine because if it is genuine you you are always going to prove it if it is not genuine then you were never able to prove it okay so let's put it this way if it if it is genuine IRCC will ask you for additional documents you would provide them any additional document that is required all right so make sure your everything that you include in your profile should be 100% accurate okay and if you were trying to fake your experience because I know a person who said that uh, uh, I have a friend's company and he is willing to issue me a reference letter for three years but might this is not something that you should be doing and in my opinion this is one reason why cash salary is although it is acceptable but is it is under question and when you were paid in cash you would have to provide all the documents that you can like as simple as that you have to provide each and every document that you can think of to provide to prove that your work experience was genuine because cash salary in Pakistan and India how can you track it how can you prove it so this is why uh, a if you were paid in bank then uh, your experience is easily provable in my opinion and if you were paid in cash then you have to include each and everything that that you can come come up with that you can think of and you just include all of that in your application to prove your work experience with these words this is Ali Fakhar uh, and I wish you all the best